I grew up in Southern Oklahoma, like a Wonder Woman loving, flamboyantly lisping gay man, gay kid. Like, I mean, like literally a purse fell out of my mouth when I talked. Podcast Junkies episode 108. Last week, here's here's a trivia question. <laughs> Who was last week's guest? Sorry, I couldn't resist. It was Jonathan Oaks of Trivia Warfare. And talk about a surprising turn of events. We started talking about some things that are near and dear to his heart where I was like really getting moved. And in the back of my mind was was saying to myself, How did we have how did we get to this point? Because I thought we were going to talk about his Trivia Warfare podcast. It's just another, 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 and another reminder of understanding that people are more than what you hear on the other side of that microphone and have stories to tell. And it's my job to get the get it out of them for your benefit. So check it out, episode uh, 107, Jonathan Oaks. If you're new to the show, what I just described happens every single week. We do that. We just dig in with podcasters. And this week, we dig in with Matt Marr. Twitter at Twitter, the Matt Marr. Matt's amazing. <laughs> this That's my phone agreeing with me. He was just so sincere and so genuine and so funny and so explicit that <laughs> it's just a perfect combination. I got a taste for it when we connected at Podcast Movement. He was emceeing the PMX Talks, which for those who haven't been to the conference, uh, for if you don't know, it's a, a bit of a TEDx type talk. We get 15 minutes and I was on number three and he was emceeing the whole thing and then we stayed in touch and kept seeing running to each other throughout the conference and I knew I had to have him on. We did a, uh, a back-to-back where I ended up being on his show. So what I would recommend you do is is check out Dear Maddie's show and you'll hear our episode. It should be out at the same time, so we're trying to get that scheduled and and it would be nice if they dropped within a day or two of each other so you can get the full experience. He was uh, We had the first conversation with me in the morning and then the afternoon with him and it just got better. <laughs> so it's almost like a two-parter that wasn't planned, although it sounds like it from some of the stuff we talked about. So listen up because you can't resist and it goes a little something like this. Oh yeah, and uh, stay tuned at the end for the retention hashtag. It's a funny one. And uh, a little bit about our sponsor, PodFunnel. Um, are you going to LA? Are you going to PodFest? Yeah, it's next week, right? Looking at my calendar. Yeah, it's next, yeah, week. It's next week. Did you go last yeah. year? I did. I bought a 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I bought a 3D ticket. And I, I mean, it's, I just go and come sometimes. I don't usually stay the whole day. So I might go, I might go one day for half a day or just a, another day to catch a couple sessions and then just kind of poke my face in there throughout the three days. I think it'd be a good mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. It's, I mean, I'm just, I'm like a five minute. I just go down San Vicente. I'm like San Vicente and Hauser. Okay. So it's super close. It's nice. I mean, it's very different than podcast movement. So, but in good ways and not good ways, you know, it's like, it's nice that like, yeah, it's networking and stuff, but you can kind of like, it's also nice to just see like fans yeah, that's what it's more. That's what it's mainly for. That's what I noticed last year when I went. I was like, "Oh, this is more like people checking out the comics and you know, really from a fan perspective." So it's what's good about that is I see meeting comics of people that I just want to interview. That's what's interesting about that. So, but um, anyway, I mean, that's really I'm just kind of like settled. I've traveled and did so much stuff with Chicago, and then I had friends' wedding. Yeah. So we were like my boyfriend and I were just like doing shit on my nephew graduated high school. And I felt like I was gone most of all this summer. So it feels just that wedding was what, two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, that was the last of like, okay, summer's done. Let's just kind of like my boyfriend starts a new job next week. I'm really like trying to hit the ground running as far as this. And I'm doing this bid chat thing with my friend Jake, which is a new platform. Yeah. And so where people talk to you and then they they bid money to to talk to you, but part of it goes to charity. I'm just like I tell, I'm just trying to give a hand job wherever I can give it. I'm just trying. You know, just so like we we can open the show with that, right? <laughs> sure. 
just open the show with that. Yeah, I'm going to try. Um, I was listening to, uh, what's his, is it Chase, the guy that's on your 100th episode? Yeah. I fucking love that guy. But I know. I was like, I heard that because I'd heard other episodes and I was like, I like to drop the F bomb. And then I heard that episode and I was like, oh, well. Yeah, it's go. Cool. Yeah, it's open season. But I'll be family friendly if you need me to. I'm fine with that. No, so we just start talking. So the whole yeah. last 15 minutes could, could be the start. You know? Hey, just <laughs> do it. Do, do it. it. I know. I'm glad we did video because. You are handsome, Harry. <laughs> Thank you. I'll tell you that. I'll make time. I'll make that as a tweetable for this episode. <laughs> you, should, you, should, you, should, you should. You should. Yeah, that's funny. But you know, I'm, I am. Did you see the documentary that's going to be at Podfest? I watched it at Podcast. Movie oh yeah, I, yeah. I'm. Do you, you know that I squeezed into like the last couple of minutes of that because um, the guys who are doing it, uh, Katie and uh, Chris Kermitzos, mm-hmm. they. They're filming Danny Pena a lot because he's from Miami, ah. from Gamertag Radio. And then Danny, I've interviewed Danny on Podcast Junkie. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So Danny, this is a cool story because Danny's like, hey, we're coming to uh, coming to LA because we're, we're going to record at CBS and stuff like that. So he's like, do you want to come in and, and record us in CBS Radio? So I got to go to CBS Radio and watch them record their episode. Then we switched it and then I recorded it. Uh, a second part interview that was like of him and his team look at you fancy <laughs> i forgot yeah 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 it, I, I love that documentary i know they're going to show it there so so that so that what happened is the guy who was filming you know that i mean chris knows me you know harry from podcast junkies so he's like oh if you're gonna go to la and you're gonna see harry get him uh, you know for a couple of minutes so they asked me a couple of questions so you know i'm assuming i'll make it in there That'll be my IMDb your, credit. Your IMDb, your one IMDb credit. It's it's fun, you know. I my like one thing for podcast um, from podcast last year is that I got to meet Aisha Tyler, which was awesome because Aisha Tyler's she was like one of the big reasons why I got into podcasting because I yeah. like girl and guy so much and I love that show. Um, I'm behind on it. That said, um, like a month or four episodes, but. Um, I loved her, and uh, and I like that show that she does. I like the talk a lot too, because I'm I've always loved talk shows. That's why I started my show as well. And um, so I talked to her, and met her. I got to like, you know, take my picture with her. I got to ask her a question during her show. We'll cut to like, so she is just I guess distilling. There's the brewing. She's making her own whiskey. This. Yeah, dist- distilling. Yeah, I, I don't think there's brewing with whiskey. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Moonshine. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody just yelled at your thing like "fucking idiot." That's not right. Um, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, so I just know how to make glitter. And uh, but anyway, no, I don't. But I could probably. Uh, but so anyway, she, my friend, my other friend is like, you know, she's an influencer and a blogger and all this kind of stuff. And she like got on this private party, like where Delta literally, it was a, this is so ridiculous. They just flew people from Los Angeles on Delta to Austin, Texas. They landed and then just flew them all back. And it was just a party for people to like on the plane. I mean, just basically they just wanted to shit money, if you ask me. But anyway, my friend. They didn't even have to fly to Austin. They could have like taken off and been like, oh, like hang around LAX or something for a little yeah. bit. And they're like, we went, you know, no one on the plane actually knows where like they went. Like Bob Hope, make it easy for everybody. And, but so the thing, the whole party was, is it was like a launch that they're, I guess they're serving uh, Aisha Tyler, Tyler's bourbon, I guess on Delta or whatever. Mm. And so Aisha Tyler was there. Cause I will say that bitch fucking works. I mean, she is like, always like bam, bam and so she served she literally my friend said that she was serving the drinks and like making them and everything and so my friend said oh because my friend don she started a podcast about like food called dining dish with don and she's like one of the reasons i started your podcast is that one of my really good friends got me into your show my friend matt marr and aisha tyler looked at her and said oh yeah i know matt marr dear maddie and i went what what like it was like it was like Judy Garland just came down from the heaven and like kissed me. Was, oh my god! <laughs> so that's like I don't even know if she'll. I was shocked. I was. I mean, she's like Mensa smart, so maybe that's why she remembers. Because I would love to one day have her. That's like I would. I would shit. I would shit glitter if I shit Tyler was on my show. Well, that's how you make it then. That's how you. That's, <laughs> that's how you make it. 
<laughs> Anyone ever asked you, how do you make glitter? Well, funny you should ask. Funny you should ask. Like a little bourbon? There you go. Are you a bourbon drinker? Uh, the whiskey thing is, yeah, growing on me. Like, I think when you start to realize if you drink the good stuff, it doesn't taste that bad. Oh, I've never then been it, there yet. No, but even like Bullet and uh, Maker's Mark, and you just start trying different stuff that, you know, I just really wasn't a aficionado. But the more you do it, and you're just like, oh, it's pretty smooth. And mm. it's, I think it's, I think it's like they always say, right? The better the quality, the less the hangover. So, All right. yeah, I'm, so. I do beer, which is terrible for you. I got to, yeah. I need to transition. So, how did you end up as one of the MCs for the PMX talks at Podcast Movement? I, Jared Easley, just asked me. He just asked me to do it, and we know how did I meet Jared Easley? Actually, that's the, that's the real story. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I feel like everybody just knows Jared Easley. Like he just was it Facebook? I, I'd have to ask Jared. I know I was originally going to go to Podcast Movement Dallas, and I was excited because I went. My hometown is an hour north of Dallas. I went to school in Dallas, so I was like, "This is going to be so cheap." And of course. It was the same time, that was this year that we started my camp, uh, Brave Trails, and it, so I couldn't go. But um, I guess, oh, oh, I know how it was. I don't know how I found out about it, but there was, what was it called? There was like a podcast thing in San Diego. I don't even know if they're, do, are they doing it this year? Yeah, podcast meetup. The oh, wait, meetups? They, yeah. they are doing it this year. and they're, Oh, the, uh, the satellite ones. Yeah, they're, but they are doing something, but they're doing it next weekend during LA Podfest, Podfest, and I was like, well, that's dumb. Yeah. Um, so, but I went to that, and I just was like, I grabbed my boyfriend, and I just said, I just, you want to go to San Diego? It's like a whole day. We don't even have to stay the night, because it was like a Saturday from like 9 a.m. to like 6 p.m., and I was like, I just don't know anybody in this community, and let's just do it, and he said, sure, and so I went, and I was totally, totally like, Totally like thrown off my game in that first one. Of the first people I met and talked to was a spree, oh. spree DeVore, which now that I know her, I'm like, but when I met her, I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing because this bitch has got it together. Like she is on point. Like, and now that I know her and I know that's her personality, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm never going to be as together as a spree. Like no one in the world is going to be that put together. Her ears are going to be ringing. We're going to have to send her this, this portion of the conversation. It's true. I mean, so, so yeah. I, I want to actually uh, pull the listener in for, so they're wondering like, who are all these people? But yeah, sorry. You know, they, so Jared Easley is the founder of podcast movement along with Dan Franks uh, and, and uh, Esprit Devoro. And Jared and Esprit have both been on the show before, <laughs> so I've interviewed them both, and they're fantastic. But they it's are. so funny. Uh, so Esprit Devora runs We Are LA Tech here in Los Angeles, yeah, and is a prominent supporter of podcasts. She's, she's, she has a couple different ones. I think uh, customer. She runs a, one called Customer First or Customer Chat or something like that. She's so. in the Women in Tech. Yeah, Women in Tech launch. Yeah, she, I know she'll be at Podfest because that's where I got to know her. Was last year at LA Podfest. So. Yeah, she's a powerhouse and uh, a really fun, outgoing personality. Oh, so, she's inspiring. She's wonderful. So, so when you first, if that's like the first person you meet and you're like, <laughs> is everyone that's in podcasting like this? You're like, oh my God. I'm just like, uh, I just turned on a mic and was kind of talking. Whoa, like, I'm so behind. I even left like, babe, I got a lot of shit I got to do. Like, I'm like, <laughs> it just, but no, so that's where I met Jared. And then we just became Facebook friends and then he saw kind of all the stuff I was doing and he liked that I was doing stand-up comedy and all this kind of crap and then so uh anyway so yeah he asked me he originally wanted me to speak at Duke but I never got a submission in in time for podcast movement so then he just asked me to MC and I loved it I actually I hope if he doesn't ask me I'm gonna totally ask him if I could do it again because it was great because I got to meet like and connect like I mean I knew who you were like yeah. we had met I was like he's handsome that's basically what I remembered about you and then um, <laughs> honestly and so and because we had met at a little thing in LA that Esprit did but it was cool just because you because that first day there's not a lot of people there so you really get to meet yeah. people I like that I definitely would go early again yeah and I almost feel like once you start to know a lot of people in the community it's like not enough time. 
to get you know because after the three days where i was just like i felt like there was probably another 10 conversations i could have had oh yeah oh yeah but yeah it was it's great i again i'm like i mean well, it's, well, it's interesting your perspective is interesting because you went not knowing a lot about podcasting so you're like i'm gonna do a local meetup and then you jump from a local meetup and then you go to this conference which is a local meetup basically times 10 <laughs> and like 10 million um yeah, well, you know, I think from, and this goes back to, you know, I starting the summer camp and like doing, when I got, when I was doing my master's in psychology, I originally thought I was going to do individual counseling. And I did that because I had to, but I really got way more into like group psychology and group dynamics and community. And so it really just nailed down to me. I just don't really buy into that whole, it's fine if people want to believe this, but the whole, the American dream that you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and do everything, you're, the, this individualistic, I think is totally bullshit for me. Yeah. Well, no, I think it's bullshit for everybody. I'm going to call it. And um, called it. Called it. <laughs> but, That's the hashtag of that moment. right? Yeah, I, I look back and about like when I've had success in life or, or really found meaning in my life or really felt connected to people. And it was when I was supported and integrated into a community. And so I knew that going in, I kind of was like, okay, I've started this podcast and I basically, I've interviewed most of my friends that are comics. And also I was seeing, I've seen a lot of podcasts that, that I knew were just comedians, like telling jokes and kind of just talking and riffing. Yeah. Whereas my show is kind of a lot like yours where I want it to be entertaining. Obviously I'm going to be funny because I love making people laugh but at the same time i want people to feel inspired but i don't want to be preachy and i don't want to be like like i'm not going to be i'm not as smart as like grant cardone or pat flynn where i can who do entrepreneur podcasts where i could say these are the seven steps you no way i got my shit together like that you know what i mean like i, I, mean, I can be like these are the three steps you use to like get gonorrhea these are the three steps you use to get rid of it that's what i could teach from my 20s Okay. So, <laughs> no, you're not going to be putting together no seven page PDF. No, yeah. no, I'm not going to do. So anyway, I didn't see, um, but I was just seeing comedy. So I would kind of, I knew I was like, I need to find community and just like talk to people about podcasting and talk to people about, which I'm still doing this about how do you get sponsorship? How do you do this? How do you do all? Because it's such a, a new, it's such a new frontier. And so I just, yeah, it, it was the best, I think, as far as my show, by far the best decision I ever made to go to drive to San Diego because it, then it opened up a world. That's how I found out about PodFest. And I actually met Esprit and, like, really became friends with her and and now meeting you and, like, just connect. It's just, it, it opened up a world, like you said, of just nerdy, lovely people like myself. <laughs> Can you think of a time in the past where an experience like that has happened? Because I went through that that same journey you know a couple of years back because i went to nmx and i didn't know anybody and it's that time you know when you w walk into your first conference you're literally like you seem like everyone seems to know each other and except you and you don't know anyone <laughs> and then so that's what it felt like and then over time you just literally start to feel like that they're your tribe yeah for sure and they you can literally any of the conversations that you have and whether you want to talk marketing whether you want to talk you know guest host you know your show your format your downloads you're all speaking the same language yeah exactly you're all, everything you say is like anyone outside that conference i think it's a bunch of you know star trek nerds or something like that yeah. you know at that <laughs> at that level of geekdom if you're not part of the the family but once you're in it's like everyone starts to you know, help each other and they're all friendly and they're like they'll give you a tip on this or help you with that or you know conversations and then connecting like like we did as well all all that happens mm. Oh yeah, it's uh, yeah. I actually now realize too. I think another reason I did that is because I grew up in Southern Oklahoma, like a Wonder Woman loving, flamboyantly lisping gay man, gay kid. Like, I mean, like literally, a purse fell out of my mouth when I talked. <laughs> Still does. And so, rhinestone purse. But that was like the first time. Yeah, I went to a gay club, but also I started. Uh, I don't volunteer anymore, but I volunteer for the Trevor Project, which is a suicide helpline for LGBT youth. And I did it before I did my grad degree because I kind of wanted to see if I wanted to do this counseling thing and if I liked it. But I also did it because I was like, eh, I've been to like gay bars and stuff in like West Hollywood and some in Silver Lake and they're okay. But 
again, I didn't feel like I even just had like a bunch of like gay guy friends that I could just talk about dating, like just shoot the shit with and stuff. Like the way I saw with my brother who was straight and like he was super popular. And, yeah. and so I joined Trevor Project and that's where I, again, I was in the, with this group of people who like we spoke a shorthand and f- four of my best friends still to this day, and that was almost 10 years ago, are one of the people I started my summer camp with are people I met from that. So that was def- that was a good lesson too for me of I just think I mean it's easier now with online but to anybody who's wanting to either start a podcast or just any really start anything find like you I love the word tribe that you use cuz to me that's the word I use all the time too find your find your fucking tribe and but, but you've got to search for it sometimes it doesn't find you Yeah cuz that's exactly what you did right you looked out for it you looked out for opportunities where you, you could see if there really was a community and, and if at the very least you went because you needed some help <laughs> trying to figure out what your next step was going to be yeah and if you're a spree devore you'll make the tribe because she does she was like there's not a tribe so i'm going to do it every la meetup and you're like okay <laughs> i don't know how to fold my socks okay <laughs> spree you're amazing <laughs> <laughs> so what's the the journey for you been like since what you had in mind when you started and you had your first episode you know, to the point where you're, you know, your most recent interviews? Uh, you know, for me, so I started this show because I had a really bad friend breakup and it was just, he was my, we were, I'm an actor. So we were filmmakers, we we're making films together. And it was just a bad, like friend breakup. And so I was kind of in this thing of, uh, what do I do? And I just needed to do something kind of artistically fulfilling to me. And so I started a book, which I recommend for anybody, a workbook uh, called The Artist Way. And it's mm. by, uh, have you ever heard of it? No. It's fantastic. It's by a woman named Julia Cameron. And it's great for anybody who, and when I say artists, like she talks about writers and stuff, but, and yeah, I was a singer and an actor, but I think everyone's an artist. Like you're an artist, like creatives. So if you if the word artist tr- triggers, just think yeah. of creative way. That that to me is what it is. And um, so it's really just a workbook about a twelve week workbook where you do just different exercises, just to kind of get you in touch with that love that you had. And so anyway, I started doing that, and it reminded me that before I even like in two thousand five, before I became, even became friends with that person, like in my journal, I'd written. I went back and looked, and I'd written. I want to start a podcast. Mm. and I wanted it to be a talk show because that's what, like I jokingly say, I'm the gay white Oprah. Like that's what I've always wanted to do is a talk show. So I thought, well, I'm just going to do this in my living room and start out. I just want to listen to people's stories, and if one person listens to it or a thousand, then I'm cool with it. And I still try to keep that even though, yeah, I want to gain people and I'd like to have sponsors and all that kind of stuff. I do still try to remember that. That even if one person listens to my show and it makes them smile and they're affected by it and it changes perspective, then that's I've won, you know. And um, but so I guess going with the so that was kind of my how I started it. And then with the first episode, I mean, (laughs) there's like two sides of it. Artistically, like the creative side of me feels feels like. I had my shit together, like for the most part. And like things have changed. Like I've edited out some sections. Like um, I used to have a section called Celebrity Shit the Bed. And I purposely had that because I wanted something a little more enticing for people interested in that. And now I'm kind of like, eh, that really wasn't me. And that part I feel good about. The tech part, oh my God. Like, Like my goal in life is just to find a handsome man to marry who knows all things technology. <laughs> that did not, I fell in love with the wrong, with the right man, but he's just, he knows some tech, but that's not what he loves. Okay. And so I, man, it's been that. So like, Oh, my first show, like I recorded, I thought I needed to record it in a fancy way format and it needs, and in the mic and the placement, I didn't test where we sat in the room. So as she's, as I'm talking, you hear my echo of her voice and her fucking mic. And like, it was hours of editing this. The first like three episodes, I mean, because I launched them all. I launched like four episodes at once. But I think I spent just a month just editing. I'm so sick of the sound of my voice. It was, so that, 
cut to now, I'm like, I don't edit. Like, I don't. I don't. Do you edit a lot? I don't. No. I can't. Unless something like we lose the call or something like that. Something yeah, yeah, obvious, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely was. I, I just... So the tech stuff, and even now when people ask me about, well, I have a question on my show when we do my show in a bit because we're switch we're switch hitting today. Um, but one of the que- and I thought you're the perfect person because people always ask me, how do I get into starting a podcast? And I'm just like, read a lot. I mean, I remember how long did it take you to figure out what an RSS feed was? It took me like two weeks. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not that. I'm so not good at that. Two fucking weeks. I'm not kidding. That's hilarious. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying to think about when the first time or the look on your face, the first time you actually saw, like, grab your RSS feed and you're like, yeah, <laughs> like what, 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 why are there two S's there? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm like, it doesn't make. I think I finally found like a video on YouTube of like a 13 year old girl talking about it that explained it, which of course shamed me. Shamed me oh so my bad. God. That's hilarious. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely, yeah, from the, I think that and just, I don't know. I think you go into like, you get, you start a podcast with hopefully the best intentions and like true intentions, at least for me. I think a lot of people do this. Then you go and either you start to get bored or you're like, oh, I'm not a new and noteworthy anymore. So I've got to find more people. And then in the, I went through this middle period where I, I interviewed people that had like large social media followings that I knew. We all do it. And the worst shows, the worst, like even I'm sitting there. I remember this one interview with this person. I'm not going to say it because the show's still on my website, but I was thinking, holy fuck me. I just like want to walk out of the room. Like I don't, I even thought I'll leave my equipment here. He can fucking have it. Like I'm just, this was, I'm so, it was like, yeah, I felt like I just like it's like it, it's like you I'd gotten drunk and went home and slept with the wrong person. And like like you just like got done having sex and you're gross, like and you feel just like you wanna just drink bleach. Like that's how I felt. Wow. Anyway, I know that's really dramatic, but that's like what a strong reaction. And I'm in the middle of that and I'm so it was good that I had that strong reaction because I that was a moment I was like, I'm gonna go back to just interesting people. People that I would want to have a beer with, yeah, or coffee if they're sober. That's fine too. I love a good tea. People I want to just sit down and have a conversation with, and then that's it. That's the only like kind of prerequisite. And that I feel like, like the last twenty shows, I've been doing better about that. You know what's so interesting, Matt, is that people overthink how they should perform on a podcast in relation to how they, do, they would normally perform in real life, right? Yeah. They think, well, I got to be this persona on the show, and then I'm, I'm this other guy in person. Yeah. And I think the people that have managed to come bring those together and let people know right off the bat, like, this is who I am, that's it, like, it or leave it. And I consistently tell folks and listeners, uh, fans and listeners, that uh, you need to, like, scare away the people that are not for your show as quick as possible as well, because there's no point in them listening. Oh, I love that. That's you know, such just a great like, way. You know, not an offensive way, but like, hey, very quickly, this is who is the show's who it's for and who it's not for. Yeah, you're just not that into me. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> That's totally cool. Yeah. I love that. Ooh, I'm gonna use it. That's some truth talk. Yeah. Hashtag truth talk, Harry. Hashtag truth talk. So th- that feeling that you had when you in- were in interviewing that person that you had no business having on the show in the first place is like mm-hmm. you know the thoughts then really go through your head like i don't want to this is not fun anymore and even if it wasn't fun for one episode it's still like the thought that that could be like that if you if you don't stay true to your path really you know if you want to do this in the long haul it gets you refocused and saying yeah i don't want to go through that again yeah it was it was it was a good like rejuvenation of kind of a re a recommitment of what I, of what I wanted to do with the show, and you know, I'm, a, I, you know, I, a, I just think we all have our own journey in podcasting, and again, it's, so I think one of the worst things we can do in life is just compare ourselves. Um, well, we can compare ourselves, and I, I kind of believe that because I'm a narrative therapist, so life, I look through a north. A, a story metaphor and I kind of believe and I got this a little bit from the artist way 
was that for me, there's like two driving forces in my life. There's the critic and then there's the muse. And so this muse is this joyous, artistic thing that that just craves connection with people and just craves love and honesty and laughter and then the critic is the thing that craves quote unquote what's right and what I should be doing and I'm like I'm shitting on myself so to speak and and what I need to be doing and why am I not doing what other people are doing which always comes up my critics always like talking at my at my heart and my head but it really um that episode was definitely, I realized I was listening to that critic more and not listening to that muse. That's just, you know, that same, I was that little eight year old boy. I remember going out to my cousin's wedding from Oklahoma. I would lived in Oklahoma from California. And I remember people, I just sat and talked to like 20 people just because that's just what I love doing. Like the wedding guests, people I didn't yeah. even know. I would just sit down and be like, so where are y'all from? Tell me about California. And that's just the kind of kid I was. And so it's like knowing that that's who I am and knowing that's kind of at the heart and the core because of who I am is good. I mean, I think that I have a friend who says that we're really, we kind of between like the ages of like four to like, five, six years old is when we're really, most of the time, in like, we're really just like living who we are and discovering mm -hmm. who we are and like pursuing what we want to do. Even if it's, you know, for me, it's playing Wonder Woman, but still, like I remember that, just the joy in that. She's like, and then like around six, seven, eight, like once you started getting more to school, we start listening to more and more, the critic gets stronger and stronger. But so she said, I feel like a lot of life is just, we're just trying to get back to what that kid would have wanted us to do. And that's, that's definitely something I try to do more and more. What's interesting is that I've, I've seen some studies and, and read some stuff that tell you that, that say it's this, those first seven years where the kid doesn't remember that, you know, that fantasy is real. Every, mm -hmm. like anything is possible. Mm -hmm. So they're still, you know, if you think about the fact that they're coming and being reborn, so they're, they still haven't forgotten where they came from. Yeah. And, and like the power that they have and, and who they are, that anything is possible. And then we start to forget, forget all that as we get older and older and older, we're farther and farther away from that connection that, that brought us here. And, we're, mm -hmm. and then that's what you're seeing being played out. Cause you know, imaginary friends and just like, not everything is possible and just like the world of imagination which starts to get you know shrink the yeah. older they get and the more they're reminded by the parents that no don't do that and you know boys don't cry and you know unicorns don't exist and all mm -hmm. this sort of stuff and you know pink is for girls and just like everything is just don't you know you, know, you laugh at a certain time and you cry at a certain time yeah. and you're conditioned uh -huh. and then that those two forces together by the time you know they're seven or eight they're just everything's been cemented in Amen. I love that. That's so true. That's so, so yeah, that's definitely that. I mean, yeah, that, I think, I think anybody who's listening right now to that and doesn't relate to that is dead inside, <laughs> you know, because that's so, I know, but I mean, it's, it is, it's so true that you, I really thought imagination was true. I think that's why I yeah. still like have comic book stuff and I have a Wonder Woman kitchen and all that because it, People are like, oh, you're silly. I'm like, no, it re it helps me remember who I really am and like mm -hmm. who I want to be instead of what other people want me to be. Yeah. Very much so. Mm, no, what, when did, so I'm going to ask you a question because I want to. Um, <laughs> and I listened to Chase's episode and I loved how he was just like, fuck it, I'm going to just do whatever I want. I'm not going to do that to you, Harry. It's your show. Um, but so like what – I'm interested in you, like how, and we maybe we'll talk about this on my show, but like in interviewing so many like podcasters, like, do you think there's like one, like, cause I think it's about being connected to like the joy of it. So what do you think is like the, oh, like a really like one overriding factor of the people that still seem connected and joyous about it. Whereas other people that aren't. I think for the most part, everyone that I've spoken to is someone who I'm excited to speak to. So that comes through in the conversation and because I really feel that they're passionate about their podcast. So not, I think if anything, they've all been either on the rise or at least leveled off, but not, none of them had been um, feeling down about podcasting, which is because that comes through. And if that does happen for any reason, obviously, you know, you need to stop doing it. Yeah. 
So, but I think what was interesting is that you it, it sort of makes sense if you think about it that people who start a podcast already have a certain proclivity towards behave certain behavior and they like you know at least have taken the plunge even if the, at the beginning they were super nervous but they all took the plunge right they Ooh, all took the yeah. plunge and they all had something to say and they all love the power of podcasting to communicate that message mm -hmm. so it's almost like that's like the thread that they all are great ambassadors and obviously it says something about who I'm picking to be on the show because every everyone you can imagine people are reaching out all the time. Oh, you're you're you know you podcast about podcasters. Well, I have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, and then and they just think and I've getting I'm getting pitches from people. It's like, oh, uh, this guy's a great sales and marketing guy. He would be great on your show. And I'm like, I guess you haven't read <laughs> listened to the show because it has nothing to do about that. Well, what? Yeah, okay. So what do you do? Because my show too is an advice show. So it's an advice podcast, but it's also comedy, but it is a little bit, it's I always say it's like humor, heart and helpful advice. But, and I'm asking your advice on this. What do you do? Cause I get this all the time. Like not just podcasters, but also actors are like, I want to be on your show, which first of all, I guess because it's so personal to me, it almost feels like it's like people saying, I want to sleep with you. And I'm like, well, I didn't even I, ask. Yeah, you. <laughs> like I haven't even buttoned my pants, dude, my artistic pants. So like, I don't know. What do you because I, I have a couple of people right now and I just go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Facebook me. And then it's like I'm totally avoiding it. Like, what do you do in that situation? <laughs> well, the first thing you do is let them know that you're already booked out for you know a couple months in advance. Ooh, that's a good one. And then, you know, because that's essentially where you want to be as a podcaster anyway, so you're just future pacing and future yeah. thinking yourself there. So it's not a complete lie. And no, then, that's actually <laughs> a little true, a little true. And then, and then you uh, let them know, yeah, I, as you might imagine, I've got a ton of folks that I have, am planning to have on the show. So... I'm actually going through a bit of a vetting process now just to make sure that people are that it's adding value to my audience. You always position it from a way from a from a from a position where you can tell them that everything that you do in your podcast is because of your audience, not for you. Ooh. Because at the end of the day, without your audience, we have no we have, we no have nothing. Yeah. We have nothing. Yeah. Exactly. So to all the whether there are a dozen people, whether there are a hundred people or thousands, and if you're lucky, you start getting tens and hundreds of thousands of of listeners but in the beginning it's several hundred it's several thousand and it probably behooves you to try to get to know as many of those people as possible so yeah if you if one person tells you they listen to their show you just find out all you can about them and then oh the yeah next, and then the next person that says oh I'm, i listen to your show and then you start to piece together like who are these people like what do they have in common and then that really helps you paint the picture of who you, who you continue to talk to week in and week out you are a smart man, smart and <laughs> handsome. Uh, I, I I had one of, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I had one of my listeners who friended me on Facebook, and then we became friends. And then I realized she started this awesome nonprofit diaper drive and as a blogger, and she ended up being on my show. It's one of my favorite episodes, and I never had met her before. She's like in Maryland and just saw my show randomly, and it was such a great podcast but that's true because i do think i think about her her name's jackie and i think about what would jackie want to hear like because mm. i know and i know about her life now like her husband's going through open heart surgery now pardon me so i think what would she want to hear while she's like waiting for you know, in the hospital or what does she want to hear when she's like you know doing laundry and the stuff are, are at work so yeah that's very it's really important to have a specific like that that's a really powerful one I mean, oh, think, I love her. Yeah, to think of someone who you know resonates with what you have to say, and then you understand what her mindset is when she's listening to your show, and what could she, what she could possibly be feeling or pain or anything that's going through her heart, while at the same time laughing to something you might be seeing on the show. It's so specific that for you to be able to say you're going to put yourself in her shoes, then you you start to feel what it is that resonates with people who are in, who are in the same boat. Well, yeah, I, I did that in that I don't do a lot as much anymore, but I used to do like branding consulting and stuff. And a lot of people hate the word branding and they roll their eyes. I actually kind of love it. And I used to be really 
And I think the people that say they don't like branding, they either A, don't understand what branding is, or B, they don't understand their brand. And so, but for me, I've started to think about it as like, what are, like where we have five senses, I started to think about what are the five senses I want people to experience my show with. And so I wrote down five words that I want them to do. So like for me, it's joy, uh, humor, helpfulness, empathy, and what's the other one? Um, Oh, and warmth. So I had those, that's like, that's what I call my five senses. So it now, anytime I tweet or I Instagram or I talk, if, if it's, if I'm like, ah, I want to talk about, I don't know, I'm doing this like hosting thing. I want to talk about it, but it seems like I'm just talking about myself. What's a way, how would I want people to experience this with my five senses? And then I'm like, oh, well, I'm hosting this event. And I talked to this real person who like was talking about, like going through cancer to that, that would be a lot of, I know some listeners that would probably gain some empathy about people going through cancer. So I'll talk. So it totally has changed for me the wow. way I can go about connecting with audience. And like I said, I probably need to write a fucking book about that, but <laughs> I, someone's yeah. going to take it. Cut to Esprit Devore is going to write a book in a year called the five senses of branding. I'm going to go, damn, <laughs> no well the key is to just put a tm on it like five cents is branded trademarked and like every time you write an email or you send anything to anyone make sure it has that little tm at the top you're like TM. don't even think of messing with that that's but, my that's my intellectual property there <laughs> but yeah that's been that's been super helpful for me i'm very um i'm lucky for that and i'm lucky that uh you know when i started my camp and everything we um what what i I, maybe, I think your listeners would like this because I think as a podcaster, it's interesting. It's a story. Like, I love stories. And so I look back at my life, like, what is kind of the thread of connection? And it was. I loved Wonder Woman and comic books. And then I grew up loving musicals. And then I grew up being a singer and doing opera. But it was always the operas I loved. Yeah, I had beautiful music with the operas where I really loved, like Verdi had and Mozart had either amazing dramatic or really funny great characters and story and so that's kind of been the through line of my life even going into therapy but when I was starting the camp you know it was a leadership camp and we really wanted to work on bullying and stuff that was happening a lot for LGBT kids and so we talked a lot about I, we, I studied the, about this guy named Marshall G- I think I might have talked about this at podcast movie but Marshall Gantz who like is a guy at Harvard and he created this thing called public narrative. And so I think of that, I use that a lot too, in that, um, and Obama has done this very, very well, obviously, whether you like Obama or not. But I mean, he did his whole campaign based on public narrative. And public narrative is, you can Google it or I can send you the show notes. It's only like a seven page document, but it's all kind of, a story is broken down into three forms. If at least mm-hmm. story that we want, to motivate people to either listen or motivate people to create change or motivate people just to feel like that they give a fuck, you know? Yeah. And Marshall Gantz didn't say give a fuck. That, I don't think Harvard would let that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, so like the first part of the story is, is the story of self and then the, the story of us or the shared story and then the story of now or the story of kind of urgency. So the story like, okay, for instance, I just told you a story about how, yeah, I went to this podcast thing in San Diego and I didn't know anybody. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Totally freaking out. And I talked to you about meeting a spree and all that kind of stuff and how I was overwhelmed. And yeah, and, and you laughed about it. And you laughed because then at, right after I told that, so that was my story of self. And then right after you t- heard that, you told your story of self, which is I did that. And I was going like, what do I do? And I didn't know anybody, and you're kind of like, and then all of a sudden, and then you automatically, instinctively jumped into the shared story where you said, and now I feel like I have a tribe. And I feel like, and I said, yes. So now we have these two stories of selves of not knowing what the hell we're doing, and we realize because we had the same, a similar story of self, now we have a story of us, a shared story. And then so then it's like, then the story of now is, well, so what do we want to do about it? like the fact that we have a shared story, how does that change the way we want to enact this story? Well, we do it by, we realize we have a shared story. You see me at Podcast Move and I see you and you ask me to be on your show, ask you to be on mine. And then, you know, if we're at a meetup, we'll probably, I would be like, oh, you should meet Harry. Yeah, he's pretty, but talk to him. He's really smart too. And then like we're enacting connection 
and then and change. And then you can do it in a political way and that, you know, a politician will talk about their upbringing, where they're from, and they'll talk about their mom and their dad, what values they raise them with. And then often then they'll talk about what values America has and how they all have the same values. And because of those values, that's why we need to have, quote unquote, health care for all. That's how they kind of. But it's the way that really quickly gets people motivated. So I learned that technique and I immediately, I try to always incorporate, that's one of the best advice I can give for podcasters and interviewers is find a way to tell your story, to con- listen to somebody telling their story to you and then immediately, don't talk about yourself, but connect how you have a similar story that connects with their story and immediately you'll open up a whole different type of interview. Or we just keep sending them back to this episode. <laughs> or we just send them back to this episode. There you go. Trademark. I'm kidding. I'm not Marshall Gaines. I can't trademark that shit. It's so funny. Or just um, It was just amazing to listen to the way you were just breaking everything out. And it was, it's probably blowing people's minds like, wait a minute. They talked about talked about it in the beginning just so they could set this up later so that Matt could explain this public narrative concept and then play back the conversation. It's almost like Inception. Like if it was Inception was a podcast <laughs> episode, they, they would be like, did, wait, wait, what did you just do to me? Like we did this whole tell, thing is written, yeah. everybody. Whole thing like right now. Oh, dick joke. Sorry, I have dick joke written right here. So I got it. No. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, uh, okay, that's interesting. No, but it was cool because you you tease it apart and, and as you're saying it, I'm like, oh yeah, I did it. I did do that. I did do that. And but it was just it wasn't conscious. It was just human like you it's said, human human behavior. Yeah. Yeah, it's instinctual. Yeah. So once you learn about it, like I guarantee you, I hope you will. I hope you'll like text me or email and be like, dude. I just totally got what you were saying. And, and I mean, just, yeah, once people learn about this, you'll be like, this is like, I told my boyfriend, he's used this. He works like in sales job. This has helped him like change his career path. I mean, this, this works for anybody on a emotional, entrepreneurial, personal level. It's just the way you connect with people and build a relationship. I think in one of the quickest ways possible. So I love it. I love it. Sorry. Nerd glasses. No, I, I think it's actually perfect for podcasters and people who are into podcast. And anyone who's into communicating with other human beings, I think, can get value from that. Yeah. So, yeah. Very, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, there you go. There you go. Boom. Tell me, so, tell me more about the camp. You mentioned a couple times. Brave Trails? Oh, Brave Trails is, um, people can find out more info on it, bravetrails.org. So, we started it in, last year was our first summer. And I started it with my friend, Jess. And her wife, Kayla, and my other friend, Kobe. And um, we basically, Jess and I, when we were getting our master's, we had to do a service project. And so the service project was combating bullying in schools and working with L.A. school districts. And that's what we did is we used that public narrative technique. And we taught that to 10 kids in a group for about eight weeks, teased it apart. And we got them to where they could tell their stories really quickly. Because another thing about talking about resiliency um, in story of self and this goes a little bit more but he uh, talks about choice point so it's got kind of like when when you had a, a chance to make a choice in your life and what did you do that changed your situation so for instance like again this isn't scripted I'm just saying but like when I talked about I had a bad friend friend breakup and I was like what do I want to do like I need to do something um, because I feel like people that are successful in par- podcasting are not doing this because they think, hey, I'm going to make money from this. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are, oh, sugar, welcome <laughs> to the shit show. You can press, you can stop yeah. uh, the Just episode right now. The gun to your mouth now. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't click. But and, if you are thinking of doing that, then call you later, right? Yeah, call me later. And ask you for advice. Exactly. But um, so, but it was about choice point. And so... Like, I mean, that was my, like, what was for you? Like, what was your, like, what was a choice point for you when you, because I know you thought about this idea of like doing a podcast, but when was the point where you were like, fuck it, I'm just going to like something switched in you that you wanted to do it? Uh, yeah, originally went, uh, regular listeners know the story, but I've, I've gone to, I went to NMX in 2004, in 2014. And I, I was going to interview DJs for this mobile app that I had that was for, electronic music DJs because that's been a passion of mine for like 20 plus years 
And then I started thinking about how hard it would get, be to get all the great DJs that I want to talk to to even talk to me. And then I started walking around the hallways and there's a bunch of podcasters that are really interesting, telling interesting stories. And I was like, this is kind of meta, but what if I, you know, I think I chewed it over for a while. I ran it by Chris Murphy. That's right. Chris Murphy, who Chris Murphy introduced Cliff Ravenscraft that year. And I was, and he mentioned the topic and we're still arguing over whether he actually said the word podcast junkies or I just thought of it when he said it. But he's like, yeah, you know who you are. You just love podcasts. And I was like, it'd be cool to talk to those people. Mm. And just that's when the idea came and just started percolating. And then uh, I was on a webinar for uh, the Podcast Paradise course. And I think I bought the domain. I looked up the domain name while I was on the webinar or something like that. And I said, <laughs> I'm, oh, just wow. gonna, I'm just going to do it. I got started. And I've done a little bit of work with music in terms of electronic music, like I took mastering class and learned how to edit. So I wasn't too afraid of that technology part. And I've been into computers forever. So I think it was just the conversation part like i was so scripted in the beginning i was like i gotta ask these 10 questions because mm -hmm. and hopefully they, they don't run out of things to say because then it would be like awkward silence yeah and so yeah you go through all that and then when you when you realize it's really just a conversation between two people and that's what people expect to hear week in and week out because that's that's what we gravitate towards when we're in a party, right? If two people are having a conversation in the corner and it's interesting, you sort of like, oh, kind of shuffle your way over and then you, you're you just eavesdropping. Like, oh, oh, I'm nosy as fuck. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. So yeah, so that's where that's where your show comes in handy then. But, you know, you just want to hear and, and then occasionally be referenced like, oh, yeah, what do you think? You know, and like pull into the conversation mm -hmm. and a good podcaster, you know, does that really well. Yeah. Because you feel like, oh, like he did, he does recognize that we're here listening to him so mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's just so it's been just fascinating to just keep having conversations and having conversations and realizing that you get the most out of just uh listening and the silence and letting an answer come even though you feel like oh man they're taking too long to answer that i'm gonna say something and then they they drop a like a crazy gold nugget i'm listening to you play because that's such a great that's such a great, that's something that's helped me as well, is that when you go to therapy school, you have to learn how to listen. It's all about empathetic listening and really, truly listening. And so that's been, that's that's for me, and that I learned in improv too. If any podcaster has never taken an improv class, just fucking do it. Like, I don't care if it's like, well, you want to go to a good, you don't want to go to Joe Blow's maybe, but whatever. But just take it an improv class because it's so... When I feel stuck, when I feel like, and I probably looking back on the interview that I hate, that I hated so much, maybe I could have gone back, you know, that's not on him, that's on me too. I probably, because of what he was saying, it shut me down and I was not listening. I was just ready to get it over with. Although, if, you know, if I listened to that again, I was thinking, huh, if I was really listening, what would I have asked if I was really, truly listening? Might probably would have made for a much better show. I'll, although, I don't know, he was a big douche. <laughs> But, but yeah, it's, yeah, this thing's been, it's, again, it's just like, I feel like podcasting is, I mean, it's such like, it gives you life lessons because it's just, mm -hmm. you're having to talk to people all the time. What a, so what do you think like, because I do this all the time and that like, I think that I get a little, I, I get a little emotionally cocky, I call it where I feel like, okay, like saying no. I'm good with my boundaries. I finally learned that. I'm like doing good at saying no. And then I'll come home and my boyfriend will be like, hey, do you want to do this? I'm like, oh, I can't. I told him that I would volunteer and do this and that. And he was like, babe, you just said you weren't going to. I was like, damn it. I'm getting it. I thought I'm getting it. I got sucked <laughs> in. And so like, there's always things that like, you know, you think you master and then yeah. you go, oh, I don't know shit about this. So like for you listening to so many podcasters, what has been like something like where you feel like, all right, Harry, like you're getting the hang of this. And then like, what's been the most recent thing where a podcaster said something and you're like, well, shit the bed. I got to like, I'm, am I starting over with this? Or that just kind of reopened that for you. I'm trying to think uh, of the recent conversations. I, I think I'm, I, what I do is just roll with the punches. So nothing really, like if it's really interesting, then we just dive deep into whatever that, train wreck was and mm -hmm. there's nothing ever been really that confrontational 
um, because I know what I'm getting myself into. So I don't, I don't set myself up to be controversial or I don't really want to catch people on the spot. You know, I've, I yeah, know, no, yeah. No, no, no. And so it's interesting because I want to make sure I'm cognizant of the types of conversations and I probably wouldn't have anyone on that I could see would be a potential argument. Not that, not that I'm avoiding confrontation. It's just like, that's not, that's not what the show's about. I mean, I've had folks on here who are the complete opposite political spectrum, but yet we, the conversation still goes an hour because just people are interesting, right? <laughs> if you oh just, yeah. Oh yeah. What, yeah. If you find the, the, the connecting points, you'll find that we have, you know, more than most people think. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We're way more, more alike than we are. I think what you should do is, uh, for podcast movement is your, your talk should be about improv. You should, oh, you, should, should, you, should, you should teach an improv class. Oh my for gosh. Two podcasters. But that would I be, should. Yeah. I should because it's, it's so many people, we all have an internal script yeah. that we want to say, you know, and, and even I do it. Even like when I'm talking, you know, I'm like, okay, I want to talk about this. And then I say, nope, I'm just, I'm, I consciously tell myself, nope, you don't need to, you don't need to talk about that. That's your ego. Mm. You don't need to sound smart because that always fails. <laughs> You don't, you know, you don't need to do all that stuff. Just, just look into Harry's beautiful brown eyes and just, just have a story time. That's what I want to do. That's all I'm doing right now. That's all. <laughs> well, that seems like a nice bow for this episode. <laughs> Your wife's going to be like, who the hell are you talking? That guy's not coming over for a drink. Even no my, way. Even my dog loved it. Oh, well, that's, that's funny. That's so, funny. So, um, so excited for so the folks who don't know, I'm going to jump on Matt's podcast later on today. So if you want to grow listenership for both podcaster, podcasters, then you would listen to my show and then jump over to his and vice versa. And then we all have brand new listeners. Well, and I just want to say this, like, I think, you know, I've had been on a show before where, I, you know, it was, they were talking about stuff and I was like, but my audience is... I don't know. I, I think I actually said, like, I don't know if they're going to like it, but you know what? Try it. But with your show, I'm like, yes, I think people will feel very, like, it's in some of the same vein, just because yeah. it's, uh, like I said, I have gay DD. So I go with the format. I emailed you that, but sugar, who knows what shit's going to happen. We start talking. It just goes in a different direction, but you never know. And that's, but that's what makes us so interesting as podcasters. Yeah, And, that, and sure. that's what I want current and new listeners to go through just like oh po- there's there's no podcaster profile like there's so many i've had so many different personalities on the show that every and every single one of them is a you know amazing podcaster mm, so. as are you as are you so where's the the best place for folks to track you down online oh yeah see this is how bad i am promoting myself uh really just dear maddie show m-a-t-t-i-e so D E A R M A T T I E show, dear Maddie show.com. That's my website. You can see, cause I do the podcast and then also I'm doing, uh, which comes out every Tuesday and then every Thursday, which I've got to edit this when we're done. Cause I'm late, but I do a YouTube video, uh, dear Maddie advice, YouTube video on, uh, for that social media is the Matt Moore. I mean, really just go to, just go to the website, just go to the website. Unless you don't want to, unless you're not that into me, then Ignore what just happened in the then, past 30 seconds. Then screw you. Then fine. <laughs> you go ride on your high horse and love your life. I don't give two shits anymore. I'm done with this. No. <laughs> kidding, 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 kidding. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably the longest description for how do I track you <laughs> down <laughs> online. <laughs> I've ever people heard. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good. good. I just got And it's yeah. perfect. Just perfect. Go there. It's just yeah, it goes with the show, goes with the episode. Yes. And I always, I always try to say this because. But if you do, if you're listening to podcast junkies and you love the show, one of the best things you can do is leave a review. So please, like, go to iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you leave reviews, and um, don't talk about me because it might be negative. So just talk about how much you love Harry. Be like, Matt is, but Harry's great. So leave a review. It helps. It helps us get the word out there and just share the love and share the. Like again, podcasters are curious. We are just curious people. So just help us share the curiosity. And of course, they're going to think that that was scripted as well. And they're like, oh, yeah, that was planned. <laughs> it's all improv. Nothing's been scripted. I promise. I promise. Thanks again. I, I had no doubt this was, this was going to be as, as fun as it actually was. So I'm glad you came on. It was, it was great. I'm happy to do it. You're, a, you're seriously, I know I always tease you and 
say how hot you are, but you're actually more beautiful on the inside. You're really just a genuine great guy. So I'm wondering if I should have put an explicit rating at the top of that. <laughs> He's definitely uh, really funny, entertaining, and speaks his mind, which is why uh, why I wanted him on because it just mixes things up and uh, makes it all around more entertaining for me and hopefully for you as well. So feedback as always, send it along. Let me know what you think of uh, the way the guests are progressing, how season two is progressing. And uh, also always reach out and let me know if there's anyone you have in mind that would be, that would make for a good conversation, especially the uh, long timers know what that's like. So would, I jive with somebody else? That's a good question. And if you think of someone that hasn't been on here, then let me know. So next week, we talk to Nico Johnson. He's the host of uh, Suncast. It's actually a, a it's, it's, talk about niche. It's funny. It's a podcast about solar energy in Latin America. <laughs> and uh, we've connected a couple of times online and um, common thread here, but uh, podcast movement, after hours, drinks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Really good conversation, and he actually went on a hiatus that was longer than he expected, and some things that didn't go right with his show, which is really made, made for a really really interesting conversation. So check that out. Uh, we are a member of Podcastica. Head on over to podcastica dot com. See all of the amazing shows. Walking Dead is about to start up again, so. That's going to be fun, Walking Dead cast. And uh, don't forget to check out PodFunnel. PodFunnel is the project I'm working on that for podcasters who have a lot on their plate and always wondering how many more hours do I need to spend on my show before I can join my family for dinner or go out with my friends or go to bed, you know, any or all of the above. You know, it, it was created out of that need when I first started podcasting and this desire to have uh, an additional set of helping hands to get my show uplo uploaded uh, to WordPress and sent over to Libsyn and sent on over to some of the sites that I should be sending it to when it first launches, like Twitter, uh, get it out to maybe YouTube and SoundCloud. So PodFunnel does all that for you, and we're adding more features as we go. We're in a special beta uh, window where if you become a PodFunnel pioneer, you can actually pay once and you're you get to use the software forever forever ever forever uh, so if you're interested head on, head on over to podfunnel.com and you'll have the sign up there um, that's the main place where i'm collecting emails so nothing no fancy landing page just podfunnel.com so again if you made it this far Let's make the hashtag something fun. Matty Rocks, M A T T Y R O C K S. And uh, you get admitted into the super duper secret podcast junkies, junkies, hashtag retention club, which would probably make for the longest badge if I had to sew one up for you. Thanks for all your support, guys. Love you. Uh, talk to you next week. <laughs>